Welcome to Electro Online. Before we show you how to actually implement the inverse matrix method, we have to show you the two ways by which we can find the inverse matrix. In the previous video, we showed you method one. In this video, we're going to show you method two. Again, we start with the same two equations. We first have to convert them to that format. Then we create two matrices, A and B. A is simply the numerical coefficients of the x and y variables on the left side of the equation, and the B matrix is simply the two constants on the right side of the equal sign. And we can say that the A matrix multiplied times the xy matrix is equal to the B matrix. And then we can say that the xy matrix, the values for x and y, is equal to the inverse matrix of A times B. And remember, all we have to do then is find out what this is equal to and then multiply the two matrices together. We found the first inverse matrix by using method one in the previous video, and here we're going to do method two. And so therefore, we start with what we call an adjusted augmented matrix, where on the left side we have matrix A, and on the right side we have what we call the identity matrix, which is ones across the diagonal and zeros everywhere else. And so what we want to do is take this and convert it to this. We want to take the left side and convert it to the identity matrix, and then the right side will then automatically be the inverse matrix of A. And notice, to go from here to here, we use what we call the reduced row echelon form, exactly the same as what we used before. But now we have something different on the right side where this will become the inverse matrix of A. So let me rewrite this over here. So we have 1, negative 1, 2, 1, and then we augment it with the identity matrix, which is like this. And again, the first thing we're going to do, because what notice we want once across the diagonal, which we already have. But we want to get rid of this number right here, and so we want to turn that into a 0. And we can do that by taking row 2 and replacing it by the negative of this number, negative 2, times the row with the 1 in it and adding it to row 2. So by now, this should become familiar if you watched the previous few videos. So when we do that, we get the following result. The first row doesn't change, so we get zero, uh, 1, negative 1, and here we get 1 and 0. But here, notice, negative 2 times 1 is negative 2 added to 2 is 0. Negative 2 times a negative 1 is 2 added to 1 gives me 3. Negative 2 times a 1 is negative 2 added to 0 is negative 2. And negative 2 times 0, that's still 0, added to 1 gives me 1. And so notice, we now have turned the 2 into a 0. But now, unfortunately, this one, which we want to be a 1, is now turned into a 3. So now we have to take that whole row and divide it by 3 to turn this back into a 1. So we're going to take row 2 and replace it by 1 third row 2. So when we do that, we get the following. Notice the top row doesn't change, so we get 1, negative 1, 1, and 0. But the bottom row changes. We take 1 third of 0, that's still 0. 1 third of 3, that's now 1. 1 third of negative 2, which is negative 2 thirds. And 1 third of, uh, where are we? 1 third of 1, which is a positive 1 third. So notice, we're almost there. We have once across the diagonal, a 0, but we have a negative 1 there. We want that negative 1 to become a 0. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take row number 1 and replace it by the negative of that number, which is a positive 1, times row 2 and add it to row 1. Okay, when we do that, we should turn the negative 1 into a 0. So let's come up here and see what we have. Notice I'm not changing the bottom row. That is going to be a 0 and a 1, a negative 2 thirds and a 1 third. And then, of course, notice that this is already in the correct form because we want a 0 and 1 there. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take the first row and we're going to replace about 1 times the second row. So 1 times 0, add it to 1, that's still a 1. So that's correct. Now we have 1 times 1, Add it to negative 1 gives me 0. That's exactly what we want. Now it's 1 times negative 2 thirds added to positive 1. That's a positive 1 third. And 
1 times 1 third add to 0, that's a positive 1 third. And notice that what we have over here is the inverse matrix of A. So in other words, the inverse matrix of A is equal to what we have in there. That's equal to 1 third, 1 third, negative 2 thirds, and 1 third. And if you remember, that's exactly what we got on the previous video. We can pull out a 1 third, so we can also say that the inverse matrix of uh, A is equal to 1 third multiplied times, and what we have left is the numerators, 1, 1, negative 2, and 1. And again, remember, that was the other form of the inverse matrix, and then we realize that to get x and y, x and y, all we have to multiply is the inverse matrix, which is 1 third, 1 third, negative 2 thirds, 1 third, and we multiply the times the B matrix, which was a negative 2 and 8. In the next video, we're going to show you how to do that so that you can get the values for x and y, which is the solution to those two linear equations or that system of two linear equations. And that is how it's done. <laughs> it's not an easy method, but it's a very handy method once, um, once you deal with more complicated systems and computers.